<laughs> Gee, you know an awful lot of tricks. Mm -hmm. You're not a professional magician, are you? No, I'm not a magician. Oh, I was just joking. You really know who I am? Good morning. Good morning. And Good afternoon. Happy New Year. Oh, yeah, that. Happy New Year. Happy non Chinese year, New Year. 2022. Welcome. <laughs> well, I have a problem for 2022. Shoot. Okay. So I'm using API. Uh, don't judge me. It's better than Azure. Sorry. Um, and we're using it. Uh, you, as... you realize I'm going to cut it out. So anyway, go on. That's fine. So what we're doing. <laughs> Can you, would you mind sharing your screen? Let me show you what we're doing. 72 hours later. Okay. So what are you doing? What are you guys doing? So we've got a flow uh, that I want to call the API, which is going to do some translating some handwriting into text for me. Okay, um, cool. So we're using a HTTP, HTTP request. Um, Yes, we could build a custom connector, but we're not using and reusing it. So we're just going to go with the flow of doing a HTTP request. Mm. It's all pretty cool, but the issue is that the API key is hard coded into the flow. And if anyone runs it and goes to look at the run, they can see the API key. So if I show you here. Yeah, the run results. Okay. And obviously sharing an API key isn't always the smartest thing you're going to do. So if I upload this lovely handwritten review from the customer. That was fast. Absolutely. So you can see actually in the inputs that the key is there. So anyone can come into the flow run, uh, even if they're not a maker and they can grab the API. Even if they're not and, maker, they just run API and they just look at yeah. the Yeah, uh, the and results. they can go and spend all their money on the API account if they so wish. Or Help. give it to someone else. Cool. Um, okay. The good news is that there is a new feature in environment variables just been documented. So we kind of hot in a new year coming hot on a new feature. So let me share my screen. Let me show you what we have here. Four to six days later. Okay. So we'll start with the solution. Mm -hmm. You don't watch TV. This used to be a very popular show a few years back. Oh, really? The Secret Life of Us. Yeah, it was a good show. Like Australian TV show. Anyway. I don't watch TV, nor was I in Australia three years ago. So yeah, no <laughs> chance. <laughs> you know. So what I want to do is kind of show your problem in the new cloud flow, instant flow. Just I'm not going to use API. I'm just going to use uh, a very nice utility. But if you want, just try to see what's coming through in HTTP calls, like you use in HTTP calls. Uh, let me start the flow first. So that's going to be uh, secrets exposed. Yeah. So there is this nice URL, HTTP right? <laughs> so it li literally reflects what you send into it. So it shows you what you sent to it. So for example, your problem is get, it's in your case, it's post, right? So let's do a post. Yeah. And then you have key equal secret value, something like this, right? Yeah. Oh, method not allowed. Uh, I think I bent it a little bit. Let's, let's use get, same principle. Okay. You see this? So it sends mm -hmm. back and say, yep, I can see your key. Yeah. So that's effectively what, what you're doing. So let me just copy that. And I'm doing roughly what you're doing without calling the stuff. I could, but it doesn't matter. So and then what we have is we're using get, and then query goes key 
secret value or not so secret value, <laughs> right? So let's save it. And I'm using get as the example, you're using post, but the same principle. So we're exposing a value inside the run. So let's go ahead and test it. And that's pretty much what the problem is, right? Yeah. So it's exposed, this, this is exposed. Exactly. So in addition, when you deploy, People who deploy, they know the value, but you as a maker, you don't need to know that value. No. Right, whatever they deploy to. So. And they don't want them to know. Okay. First, we need to do some prep work. And the work we're doing, we setting up Azure Key Vault that will have a secret stored inside it. Mm -hmm. And then the new feature is we can set up environment variable to retrieve this value. And the, the secret, secret is the API key. Well, in this, well, this yes, it could be anything. Okay. Uh, secret could be anything, but in this case, it is API key. So we're just gonna tuck it away in Azure Vault. No one has access to it. And user will not access it. The Dataverse will access it on behalf of the user. Sorry, mm -hmm. not on behalf, Dataverse will access it. Um, let me walk you through details of what permissions you need to set up. First of all, in your subscription, you need to set up a provider. You, your subscription need to recognize Power Platform. You see it's not registered? Yeah. You need to do it once per Azure subscription. You just need to register your Power Platform as a resource provider. Okay. You do it once and you set. So now we have, uh, let me just double check that we have this resource provider. You see my super spendings on this demo subscription. Woohoo! 60 cents. Now it's Pretty big sender. Okay, so if I search for Power Platform, it's registered. You do it once, you all set. Now what I want to do, I want to set up Key Vault. I already have one, but I'll create another one. a new key vault uh, uh, cross group citizen. I'll put uh, citizen vault. Is that where you keep all your citizens? Yeah, uh, Australian East standard pricing tier review create. We need some music on hold here. Do, 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 music. Do. Your deployment is in progress. Azure yeah, yeah. Um, the one thing that you might need to uh, remember here is that it's a good idea to create a separate vault per environment. So if you've got production, separate vault for production. That way, if you breached, then you breach only one environment. You don't breach all of them. Like if test leaks, mm. you don't breach yeah. production and so on. Nice. Right. So we've got vault. Um, there are a couple of things you need to set up. First of all, whoever is setting up the environment variable, that will be me in this case. I'm sysadmin, so that's not a problem. But maker could be someone else. You need to make sure that maker has read access. Otherwise, you, you get a message when you're trying to connect. You'll get a message you don't you just have can't see read it. access. It's just the user who creates. The maker needs read access to the vault. That's fine. And remember, you don't need production. It's only production access. It's only when you create environment variable. Once variable is created, it will be dataverse. This, we come into that. So um, we go into policies. This is me. And I want a new access policy. And this is where it gets interesting. So I want get. So just retrieve. That's it. And here we go and select principal. There's lots of these coming up. And one of them is called Dataverse. Mm -hmm. So Dataverse principle has get access. So Dataverse can access the vault. So nice. once you okay. set up a variable, Dataverse will access it for you. Right. 
it'll only get it though. I won't be able to intercept it if it goes and gets it for me. Correct. Uh, so let's create a secret. Name, real secret. Uh, let's call it uh, API key. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, we can't use spaces here. API key. And the value, the real secret. I don't know the value, right? I can show it to you. Boom. Ooh. Boom. Right. Um, you can set activation expiration date. There's a lot of things you can do with secrets in, in Azure Vault. Um, but we created the secret, that's fine. So we've got API key. So now we have all the information to create this environment variable. So now let's go ahead and uh, go back to our solution. And we'll create environment variable. And we'll call it uh, API key. I'm not gonna do. And you see this? Secret. Ooh. Azure Key Vault is the only one supported. So now we enter in value. Mm -hmm. And that could be different. I can enter default value in production. I can strip this value before deployment. So when people deploy, they would have to put production values in here. Yeah. So that separates production from test or whatever, um, test development environment. So we need Azure subscription ID. So let me just... Uh, Go ahead and find subscription, my subscription ID. That's not helpful. Let's copy. Okay, so we'll paste. Resource group name was citizen. Key vault was citizen. And the secret name was API key. Done. Let's go back here. So we created an environment variable, a type secret, points to vault to a specific value in Azure Vault. Now yeah, I'm saying, oh, instead of that, I want environment variable. Wait a minute. <laughs> Where's my variable? Ah, is the trick because it's not you who accessing it, so you can't access it. What you need to do is add an action. It's a dataverse who's accessing it. So you go and perform unbound action. Ooh. And unbound action is retrieve. Show me matches for retrieve. Environment variable secret value. Mm -hmm. And here we need the full name. I just, just know it, right? It's How a name. You know? It's a name. Um, let me show it to you. Well, let me save this one. That's this one. That's the name. The name oh, variable. okay, right. Yeah, the name of the environment. It's variable. a lo logical name of the environment. Logical variable. name. Got it. All right. So let's go back. So I just performed an unbound action, retrieving the vault secret uh, secret value from the vault mm -hmm. the environment variable that whole points to the vault specific vault secret so now i can go and paste these and there's one more thing to do mm -hmm. setting uh, is it secure it's n parts isn't it or inputs. Now let's see it. Ooh. Ooh, nice. Oh, I might have uh, Citizen Vault get permission. I swear I set it up. So let's let's double check. Maybe it was the wrong vault. Uh, let me just citizen vault. Access policies. Oh, I, I don't think I saved, but this is a good <laughs> illustration that what happens, right? So we just need access policy. Um, get. Oh, yeah, this is the database one. 
I don't think I press save. I just assumed. So dataverse save. Yeah, that's what I didn't do. Okay. Try again. Much better. Beautiful. Oh, it's exposed. Sorry, I ticked the wrong one. That one that needed to be. I, the settings of that one. That And then it would be outputs as well, because it puts it in both. Oh, we don't have secret inputs, actually. We, we don't have any. This one doesn't. This one actually doesn't matter. Because we're protecting this one, the one that retrieves. Yeah. So now when I run, or let's say make it runs in production, or user runs in production, so we get no output value. Hmm. This is where it gets interesting. No input value here either. But Smart. because we set up this HTTP bin, it just reflects what you're sending it to it. Here's hmm. the real value. It just okay. sent it back, right? But looking at the history, you can't tell where it came from, what it was. It just protected fully protected so you're not exposing your api key it sits nicely in the vault vault is controlled by sys admins or environment administrators in production you as a maker ideally shouldn't have access to that vault at all right yeah and the interesting thing when user runs it it's not the user who's accessing user doesn't need permissions to access vault at all it's dataverse accesses the vault. That's why you're using this unbound action retrieve environment variable secret value. Isn't yeah. that nice? It's lovely. So that way you can actually protect your API key, stick it in the vault and just use this approach, uh, yeah. which is fresh from the oven, so to speak, in 2022 and mm -hmm. protect, protect your environment. Assuming cool. you don't give anyone admin rights in production. Oh, yes, that one. <laughs> but that's separate conversation, right? <laughs> On that note. Always a pleasure. Thank, thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Next time. Don't forget. I'm not getting nervous. Don't get nervous. Please, let's come back.